guys, welcome back to yet another episode here at Or. Now, I may have just fell off the camera there. Anyways, now, what we plan to do today is we're going to be deep cleaning almost all the reptile enclosures here in the reptile room. Now, the, and Cerberus, so the whole reptile house basically. Now, this video is going to go up late today, and I do mean today. Uh, all of the cleaning supplies came in Wednesday. But Wednesday, I shipped out my very first leopard gecko. We sold one of the babies from last year. That leaves one left. And, well, you know what? It went really well. I would have recorded it, but I didn't know how things were going to go, and I was stressing out a lot, so I didn't even think about it. I was also right after work. I headed to FedEx. Anyways, so we're going to do some deep cleaning today. The reason I didn't do it yesterday like I wanted to is I got home from work passed out for 14 hours. Like by the time I fell asleep to the time I woke up, it was already time to change over reptile lights. So we're just going to do it today. I know it's late. This video is probably going to come up probably Sunday, mo Saturday morning, if not Friday evening. Well, it is Friday. So I'm hoping I can put it out today still. I am getting really upset with myself for not being able to keep my own timelines in check. But as long as the business hits its timelines, that's what really matters. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start with geckos today. They're quick, they're easy, they're to the point, but that's who I want to start with because I got the aspen right in the living room and it's easier just to go ahead and get everything of one type started and finished before you do anything else. So let's roll the intro. So I'm going to be using Katie's Small small Pet Select Aspen sh Shaving Bedding. Whatever, it's Aspen Bedding. I don't know why I'm trying to be technical about it. Forget that. Uh, I've been using this for the past two and a half years. Anyways, I've been using this stuff. It's real easy to get up. It's not the kind of Aspen Bedding that you'll find that, like, that real thin coarse stuff. The reason I use this thicker stuff is because this way if the animal eats it, it'll recognize it in its mouth a little sooner and it's going to spit it out and not ingest it. So that's why I use this big stuff. We're going to keep using it. It's one of my favorite to use. It also comes in this big bag and this big bag will easily fill up everyone in here twice. But it's time to get to it. So enough lollygagging around. Let's start. Who do we start with first? I think honestly first up we're going to start with ear here. And I think I'm going to just set her inside of one of the little small deli cups if she'll fit. I don't know. The geckos will be a little too big for it. But gear, ear will be about the only one I can fit in there. And she is already mostly out. I am looking around and noticing that like none of my reptiles have any water. But I also forgot to turn on the AC in here yesterday. And uh, that does eat up quite a bit of the water. Alright, so first up we got ear. I will not be surprised if she goes for me. She's, she's a little defensive. So, this is Ear. Our Enri, my Enri, I think Snow, Albina, something like that. Uh, corn Snake. Now, they do make for great pets. However, I am noticing something at the tip of her tail. Her tail is a little discolored. It doesn't stink. It doesn't look like anything's going on. So, I can't be sure if it's tail or scale rot. But I'm not seeing it anywhere else on her, and she eats constantly, so I don't think it's that. But it easily could be. Or it could just be a little bit of poo that she slithered inside. Either way, I got a great solution for that. So, she's going to get a nice little bath in this, some bio-iodine water. In case it is scale rot, it'll help treat it. And if it's just, you know, some normal, everyday old, just she's... She went in some poo. It'll help clean her up. So I'm going to put her in here and I'm going to get to cleaning her enclosure. And that's all you're going to do. I'm going to do that with water dishes, anything the snake touches, except for the inside of the enclosure. If it was someone like Gargoyle, I'd probably do the inside of the enclosure. But you're going to want to make sure you dry all that up and clean it all up. Or else it could potentially eat away at the reptile scales while it's still wet. Because salt, or not salt, vinegar is slightly acidic. 
So I want to make sure it's all washed away or neutralized with water before I go ahead and put the reptile back. Anyways, I'm going to get to this and we'll get back to ear. Now, this is going to be Ear's new setup for a while. And she does get to stay here in the reptile room. Uh, if it will focus. Most everything that was on her tail did come off. Now, as you can see, there is still a little bit left. But that just means I'm going to have to give her some baths for the next few upcoming days. So she's going to get quite a few baths here lately. But a lot of it did come off. So that's a good sign that it isn't scale rot. And instead, just something stuck to her scales. But to prevent it from becoming scale rot, we do want to give her some baths and make sure that it all does come off and go away. Either way, right away she goes into burrowing. So let's get on to the next one, shall we? The next enclosure we got on the chopping block is Midas's here. Now, Midas, who you would think I should be looking at all these black spots as possible scale rot, but really, he's had these brown spots his entire life. And as he's grown bigger, they just stand out a lot more and they just pop. And I almost wonder if this is from the dinker that he possibly may or may not have in him. As you can see, they're all spaced out in random orders. This has always been a part of Midas and he looks so handsome and beautiful. I absolutely love this guy. It may just be a remnant of the spider morph or Midas is going to get a bath, just like Ear just did. All my reptiles are going to get a bath. It's going to help hydrate them. It's going to help them keep moist scales, help them if they're going into shed. Some of these reptiles, it's harder to tell if they're going to shed. Midas and Ear are both ones that are kind of sort of difficult to show. But we're going to get into cleaning his enclosure. So let me go get his uh, coconut coir in here so I can start taking care of him. Look at the handsome boy right after getting a bath. Ooh, that water's still nice and warm, which is perfect because I do have the AC turned off in this room. So I'd imagine it'd still be warm. But look at him, looking all beautiful. Always looks more golden after a shower. Or a, <laughs> not a shower, a bath. But uh, yeah, this is going to be his new setup for a little bit. For the next three months. Kind of give him some different reviews. What you going to do, bud? Good climb. You're just gonna sit there. Look stupid. There he goes. Now, despite owning two spider ball pythons, I did get extremely lucky. I do not recommend spider ball pythons for anyone. They have neurological issues. I shouldn't have even done it. I was convinced into it. I almost kind of regret it. But at the same time, I don't regret it at all. They are two very, very beautiful animals. But as you can see, I've gotten very lucky. Normal spiders would be having an extreme wobble right now. Now, a lot of his other genes may have pushed the wobble away, but he is sitting almost perfectly still. He's got a little bit of a wobble when he goes into hunting mode, but other than that, he is perfectly fine. So this is the great part about rearranging enclosures is it's been about 10 minutes since I put Midas in here and he is still out and exploring. Such a curious little boy. Now as much as I like Hell's setup, it is time for it to be changed. But where is the beautiful girl who can never be located because she is a reclusive little girl? She is in the back hiding, but not very well because dad sees her. And just, oh no, the glove. Now, I don't know if you heard that or not, but she did rattle her tail against the glass as a defensive mechanism. Makes predators believe she is a rattlesnake, which is ironic because she eats rattlesnakes. But still, because of the fact she's going to only get four foot long and she doesn't actually have venom, she has to have some sort of defensive mechanism, either bright colors which she doesn't have, or mimicry, which is what she's doing. She's mimicking rattlesnakes, even though she looks nothing like them. It's that sound that will alert, that will make a predator think she is in fact one and scare them off. Because she ain't going to be able to take on something like a dog or a cat even. 
So it's a defensive mechanism in order to help her stay safe, even at a smaller, even larger size. But let's get her in the water. I can get her to let go. Now, some people prefer to do their reptile enclosures monthly. I prefer every three months. It's how I like to do it. If I the business does pop off and you know I do open up the zoo, it'll probably be a little bit more often than that. Just be hell. Even when the business pops off, it'll be more often than that. Cause the the more animals you have in a facility, the more often you want to clean. Right now, I am still comfortable with doing the three months. If I get a few more animals in here, I'll definitely be reducing it to two months to if not a month. But it's all based upon what you got and what your preferences are. Like I said, for me personally, it's every three months. As I did mention earlier, because I want to talk about it before I forget about it, we sold our first leopard gecko this week. Well, not the first leopard gecko, but it is the first one that I sold and shipped out. Which is a monumental movement in the right direction for the business already. That money that I made is just sitting in the bank and it's going to stay there for a little bit eventually when i make more money i'll use that to go ahead and improve on the business most likely with another female leopard gecko the reason being is because i don't want war to be holding all the breeding again next year i'd be okay with getting one more leopard gecko before then and i'd even be okay with getting a ball python at some point before then luckily for me my work is about to bump up into overtime and I make just enough money to survive based upon my hours. But luckily when that overtime comes in, I can start using the money to further go into this business. And that's what I'm going to do. Heck, whenever I open a Patreon or if we can hit, you know, the 3000 subscribers required by YouTube to make money off of the platform, then, oh man, all that money also going to go into the business. My dream and end goal is, it might not be possible, but this is year one. I got four more years. If it happens sooner, if it happens later, I will be ecstatic. But I want to have my own actual store within the next four years. I don't know how feasible it is. I don't know how impossible it is. All I can do is wait and try and find out in time. Now, because I'm doing this deep cleaning, I figured this was a great time to, you know, just go ahead and talk to you guys about my future plans like that. And that is one of them is I do in the next five years want to open my own business. I do eventually want to see places like Thailand, Mexico, places like that, places where reptiles are abundant. Arizona would be a great one here in the United States. This way I don't have to get a passport. If I could ever get my car fixed and make a summer trip to Arizona, I would do it. I'd love to see wild Gila monsters uh natural rattlers all that i'd love to go out in the arizona desert for just a week and just explore live survive and i'd love to do that at some point and hopefully the channel can at some point bring me there if not that's okay we'll do it on my time with money i make working as a normal american i'm done with here so let me go put on my gloves again so i can put hell back so this way she don't bite my hands you see that right there he's shedding oh well I'm glad there's plenty of humidity in here. He ju did just get a nice bath, so it should help him with all those scales coming off. Okay, let's put this back where it goes. Woo Remember what I talked about earlier, that sometimes I can't tell when Midas is about to shed? Point proven. I didn't know he was going to shed literally today. He showed no signs of it. Yes, he didn't eat last week. In fact, he hasn't eaten in the last two weeks, I believe, which isn't a strange for Midas. He is a little more on the picky end. But, uh, yeah, no, I was not ready for that whatsoever. Sorry, I had to get up there and actually latch the dang thing because it came undone. But, yeah, no, everything's going to work out eventually here in the end. And I can't wait for it. And I appreciate everything y'all do. But, yeah, we... We shipped our first gecko this week to a subscriber, no less, which means a lot to me. I love to see the community grow. I love for the community to put back into the business because y'all are ultimately what's going to make this business grow. Not me. No matter what I do, I can only make it grow so much. I can add to the collection, but it'll be just that as long as no one buys. It's just a collection. But as long as you guys buy, I am glad to keep doing this, even if it's just a little side hobby and I never get to quit my day job. 
Oh, I love to share these beautiful animals with the world. So this is currently how we have the house set up. I know, very similar to how it's always been, but it is a little different. Either way, she does not want to go back home. She is very much curious and wants to explore. I'll bring her out later. And if you can't tell, what I do is whenever I do these deep cleans, except for with the big snakes sometimes, I like to try and clean the glass too so I can get a better view of my animals. Yep, look at him. There he goes, shedding away. It's a good thing I made sure that was secured. Amazing. I love to watch them shed. It brings it's so cool and I still to this day keep a lot of their sheds I don't know why I am obsessed with their sheds, but I am especially the complete ones Like I've said before I've thought about starting a patreon using y'all's money to build the business and I'd do something like oh for 20 bucks, I'll send out sheds for five bucks. I'll do shout outs here on the channel and for 40 bucks, I'll send you a shirt. Well, I'm nowhere near ready for that because I definitely don't have anyone ready for a shirt. But I think that'd be such a cool idea. And But there is one major thing. The economy sucks. I can't afford to live by myself. And if I can't or actually I barely can afford to live by myself. And if I can barely live, afford to live, how can I expect y'all to fork over your hard earned money to help me out? with these animals and help everything grow. I can't do it, it's the whole reason, despite talking about Patreon, I've never actually done it. So I'm gonna let YouTube do all the work. Instead of doing a Patreon or something like that, please, if you wanna show support for the channel, subscribe or send out. Send the channel out, get it known, let's get it raised, risen. My goal for the end of the year is 175 subscribers. We are so close to that already. We have exactly 37 subscribers to go right now. And I know you guys can do it. I know we can get there. That'd be great. That's double what I made. That's double the subscribers I had at the end of last year. I know we can do it. I know after I took my month break, the videos have gone down. And I'm trying to get back into where I was. But we'll be there. Yeah, let's get on to the next animal, shall we? It doesn't get any fresher than this. This is legitimately straight from the snake to the point it is still moist and actually kind of gross to touch i'm not gonna lie so add that to the collection let that dry out but what funny timing midas had anyways we're gonna start with the leopard geckos now and i'm not gonna film me getting out each and every one of them but i am gonna just do a quick shot after it's all said and done then we're gonna get on to pandora gargoyle and cerberus in that order stick around all right, guys, so it is now 5 p.m. and I am done with the leopard geckos. Ugh. I need to clean out, hit, I need to clean off his glass. I guess I forgot that. But the leopard geckos are now all set up. As you can tell, some of them got a little bit more greenery in them. Sorry about the mess. But it is now 5 o'clock, so I think it is very fair to say that uh, this video isn't coming out today. You need to get some weight back on you. Laying all those eggs and cleaning that supplies clutch you weren't ready for made you lose some weight, girl. All the other geckos look good, but we gotta fatten you back up. Yes, we do. You gotta be healthy again. So, I still got a couple more animals to deal with. I got two snakes and a lizard to go. So, I'm gonna get started on that real quick and we'll be back. Uh, that's right, it's Pandora next and Gargoyle then Cerberus. So let's go ahead and get with that. If I have to, I can put Cerberus tomorrow. I am still off tomorrow, so it won't be any detriment to him or myself. But I do also have to get this house clean because this reptile room is a mess. And so is the rest of my house due to all the aspen all over the place. Yay! You know, while I was cleaning the leopard geckos, I uh, decided to make a little investment here. I didn't buy anything. Thing big or fancy, but I did buy something. 
And that's going to be a surprise for sometime next week's videos. As it is going to be coming in. And it is going to help me out just a smidge. It's nothing super fancy. But it is something I have been looking into for a little while now. And I've been thinking about doing for a little bit. And I'm not going to spoil the surprise. You'll have to come back for next for the video that it pops up in. But it is going to be quite fancy. And it's going to be the fanciest anything in this room is going to be minus the... Uh, Did you just lay eggs? You are underweight. Don't tell me you're trying to lay eggs right now. Girl, how much baby batter did you save up? One second, one second. Let me show you guys what I'm seeing. Look at War here. You can't, she's not doing it right now, but she was literally just kicking all that out. In fact, you can see some of it kicked into her hide. What are you doing, girly? One second, I'm about to check her hide box, make sure she didn't just lay a clutch of eggs. See, look at her go, look at her go. It's almost like she's nesting right now. I've never seen her do this. And I really hope she isn't about to lay a surprise clutch of eggs. She is so, she is very underweight for something like that. Due to all the eggs she had laid this year because of the last surprise clutch being about a week or two after her last clutch, she hasn't fattened up properly. And also, I didn't really see her chasing the crickets I had put in there, so maybe she did lay a clutch of eggs. Oh my goodness, I really hope not. That's not what this video was intended to be. This is crazy, absolutely insane here. I've never seen her act like this. Uh, one second. Well, I don't want to cuss, but damn. No wonder you're underweight. You just keep popping out eggs. You just keep popping them out. I haven't paired you with a male in a month. Where the hell did you get the baby batter from? As you can see, guys, I got a clutch of eggs, so I got to deal with that real quick. Despite literally going about cleaning all these leopard gecko enclosures. God, we got a shed today and we got eggs led. What the hell is going on here? I'm sorry. I know I'm using HE double hockey sticks often, but what the girl? Slow your roll. You're gonna, you're gonna get MBD at this rate. This is just to prove that reptiles hold on to baby batter a lot longer than anything else does. So, uh, yeah, no, I wasn't ready for this at all. I gotta get these eggs in an incubator. In fact, the incubator isn't even set up, so I don't know if these eggs are gonna be good or not. They might be as bad as every other egg I've had this year. Or they might actually hatch and then, oh no, now I got three leopard geckos to sell on uh, Morph Market. God, I was not ready for this. As you guys can see, I've, I've shown you guys pretty much every time I've uh, gave war a mate. But, uh, yeah, no, I was not ready for that. That blew, what the, I'm not mentally prepared for this. I don't know whose offspring they could be. They could be War because I paired her up with, or not War, Famine. Because I paired her up with Famine forever ago. And she didn't produce because she just laid Gluttony's eggs. Which we had tried for Gluttony a lot this year. We didn't really try for Famine. But, uh, yeah, what the, f this is not what I was expecting at all. I'm going to have to edit this one up quite a little bit. But, whew. I guess we'll keep in, they might not even be, can I guess I could candle them, see if they're even viable eggs, or I could just throw them in the incubator and hope. I don't think she's even had any viable eggs this year, and I'm not good enough at the candling to know what exactly to look for here. I, that's something I need to practice more, but I don't want to damage the eggs in case there is actually something in there, but... That girl ain't never going to get back up to weight if she keeps holding on to the baby batter like this. I'm really going to have to check her enclosure out because there's only this one egg. And she was still digging around in there. So I'm just going to look around in here real quick. Make sure there's not another egg somewhere hidden around in here. Because she normally lays two eggs. Leopard geckos can lay anywhere from one to two eggs. I just want to make sure there's not a hidden second one because if that egg goes bad 
and it starts decaying in here, it's going to be really bad for her, and we don't want that. Are you the dad? Are you Mr. Uh, father? So I just checked her enclosure. There's only one egg, so it may be a single egg clutch. I'm going to be back in a couple of hours just to double check because there is a chance that she is, still has one egg hidden away in there. I don't know for certain, and I won't know for certain until I check back in a couple of hours. The odds are it is a one egg clutch because she did leave the lay box and started digging around in there, but man, we weren't ready for this. We were supposed to get the gargoyle, Cerberus, and everyone else, not be stuck on the leopard geckos for this long. Anyways, I'm going to get to setting this egg up and putting it in the incubator, and then we're going to get to Pandora. That's going to be enough of the egg for this video. It was not supposed to happen. Let's hope this egg hatches this year, and if it does, I don't know, maybe I'll keep it because of the fact, well, I wasn't expecting this. This this was a supplies clutch altogether. Wow. I I think I'm going to have to end the video there. There is no way whatsoever I can top that. I mean, a surprise egg out of the blue? Yeah, there's nothing I can do. I Gargoyle could try and bite me and it wouldn't be enough to increase this video anymore. But I do want to say I candled the egg. I believe I did properly. I put a light up to it. I didn't see what looked like veins. Veins usually look, from what I understand, reddish. And the egg itself should look a little pink. And it just looked yellow inside of there. Then again, my eyesight's not what it should be. I can't be 100% certain. So it's going to go in the incubator regardless. And I have already decided. I am going to sell the... If one does come out, I am going to sell it on Morph Market. I got no choice right now. I need the extra income so that I can get this business started. As much as I want to start keeping eggs, I can't keep eggs. I also I don't have enclosures in here to keep the geckos. But I have decided that while the gecko is here, if it is a male, it will be known as Bear Grylls. Because it is a survivor. And if it is a female, I got to remember her name. But I'm going to name it after the woman off Man Woman Survivor for the exact same reason. It doesn't go along with the theme I have in here, but you know what? That that egg poof, blew my mind. Wasn't ready for it. It's getting the dang name. And it's going to stick. I'm probably going to keep recording just in case anything crazy does happen while I'm cleaning these animals. But the video may or may not end here. So with that, I'm going to say thank y'all so much for watching. And I hope to see you in next week's video. And be, stay tuned because here in two months, if that egg is viable, it will hatch.